there, beloveds. The Reverend Beth Simmons here with your late in the week, midweek moment. Or a little, um, <clears throat> I don't know, lazy, hazy days of summer maybe. Um, trying to get a lot done. And, uh, and so the days this week sort of escaped me. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to make a quick video uh, with a thought that, um, that jostled me today um, from a gardening company, a farming, uh, like, or, um, let's see, I, I don't even know what they are exactly, a gar yeah, a garden, garden company, garden things. Um, I ordered some adorable little uh, plant labels, ceramic plant labels, and um, on the box that they came in, um, it says, let's root for each other and watch each other grow. And I just stopped. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, a little quippy saying on a box um, from a mass produced <laughs> ceramic um, plant label that I ordered off a big, large company website. Um, but gosh, um, Imagine if we all did that. I and mean, we are taught from a very young age, at least in this country, in this culture, um, to be competing, to be striving to do our personal best, um, and to really just sort of look at other people um, to see where they are as far as whether we're ahead of them or not. You know, we have standardized tests that we give kids that mark them as far as uh, where they are in relation to other kids their age. Um, you know, we have GPA, grade point averages that tell you, and, and ranks, class ranks. Um, we still, you know, we graduate high school kids with valedictorian and salutorian, you know, the first in the class, the second in the class. Um, and, um, and we push people out into the world to try to push them to constantly be better than other people somehow, right? To compete, to get somewhere faster, to do something, um, you know, earlier. You have to be one of the 40 under 40 that are doing something six more successfully and, um, and not to help other people as much, you know, maybe casually. Um, but I think, you know, every once in a while, a video will go around the internet of uh, like competitors in a race, right? Where somebody stumbles or somebody's ill and one or two of the other competitors will stop their own race and go back and help the other competitor. And they make it around because it's so unusual. But what if that didn't have to be the case? I think this though, Jesus doesn't mention competitiveness so much in those so many words. Um, honestly, I think this is sort of a core part of the Christian faith, of a Christian life, is to root for each other and watch each other grow. I'm reading this book. Uh, called Finding the Mother Tree, and it's about a woman who grew up in forestry. She came from a uh, logging family um, in British Columbia, uh, Canada, and um, and and she was one of the very first um, female loggers, sort of to go into that industry as an adult woman, um, and and their idea, their original thought, their sort of whole culture when they're replanting after clear cutting, um, after cutting down on these trees, which she struggles with that idea anyway, but she is that um, they should be planted in rows, neat little rows all lined up um, because trees compete with each other and you need to have space so that each of them grows individually. And what she discovers eventually um, is what we're just hearing a lot about in the last few years, which is that that is not the case, that trees actually are in relationship with each other and help each other and nurture each other and root for each other. Literally, they share their roots and they send nutrients 
and water uh, and help if there's a disease or a pest um, to the other trees around them, at least of their species, um, but often to other species as well, I believe. Um, so we have been putting this whole human idea of competition and individualism onto trees when that is not the case. And I think instead what we need to do is learn from the trees and learn that all are healthier and thrive more when we share our resources <clears throat> and, um, and root for each other, help each other to grow. So instead of going, I'm just going to do my best and I'm going to be in this line on the track and I'm going to run my fastest and not look at anybody else unless I'm just looking back to see if they're behind, if someone's behind me or not. But instead to circle up, to look around and say, who, who's struggling? Who needs a boost? And, and who needs cheering on? that they can do something, that they can be good, that they can be wonderful and be fully, more fully themselves. And then be happy and excited when they do good things rather than feeling threatened by someone else's success and, uh, and well-being. We literally are being told that others' well-being is a threat to our own well-being. And that is simply not the case when all when when everybody does well all do well as a whole so how friends how friends today can you root for someone else and help watch them grow is there a child in your life who needs to hear that their math scores their ability to read well, their uh, success in school and grades. I know it's summer and some of you have started going back to school and, and many of us in our, our area has not gone yet. But, but this could be causing a lot of anxiety for kids as we get, we're in the month where school begins and they're getting ready to that, those measurements and that set of <clears throat> sense of competing with their classmates. Is there a child in your life that you can say, hey, I'm rooting for you and that you can encourage to root for the other kids in their class and say, hey, can you make sure your whole class does really well this year, not just you? And what does that look like? Can you imagine what that might look like for a classroom of students to do well, not in grades or test scores, but just holistically? Is there someone in your life who's reaching for a stretch goal that seems out of reach for them that needs cheering on? Yes, you can do this. Is there someone in your community that you could help that needs just, just a little boost? Financially, spiritually, just, just emotionally just a, a hug to say, hey, you can do this. Let's root for each other and watch each other grow. And then see our garden of humanity flourish. Friends, I hope that you have a wonderful week, that you are have rest of your week. It's not much time um, until we see each other. Hopefully, many of you see each other in person on Sunday, and if not, um, just over the interwebs. But um, I hope you have a chance to set some deep roots, to stretch out and reach towards uh, another species, human or not, um, with your care and your love and, um, and that you receive that in return, um, so that you might, um, feel grounded and supported and, um, and rooted for, um, so that you too might grow and thrive. Be well, beloveds.